Hi everyone, this is Andrew Primer, Ukrainian-American, reporting from Kyiv. In today's podcast, week 96 of war in Ukraine, and this is the last week of December 2023. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about Russia performed the largest attack on Ukraine, launching over 158 drones and rockets within 24 hours. And we're also going to talk about what actually aggressor is striving to achieve. 39 people were killed and 159 others were wounded in a massive Russian drone and missile attack on December 2029. Ukraine intercepted 114th of the 158 drone and missiles Russia launched at Ukraine overnight starting December 28th to December 29th. This is Russia's biggest attack on Ukraine since the war began in February of 2022. Russia started with drone attacks on the evening of December 28th and continued with missile strikes in the early hours of December 29. So Ukrainian population has started preparing for the holiday season to celebrate the New Year's. So Air Forces, in coordination with the Defense Forces of Ukraine, that night destroyed 27 Shahid-136 drones in 87 cruise missiles X-101, X-555, and X-55, said the General Zaluzhny. Around 3 o'clock in the morning, December 29th, Russia deployed 18 295s bombers. By around 6 o'clock in the morning, they launched at least 90 cruise missiles X-101, X-555, and X-55. Around the same time, Russian forces launched eight cruise missiles X-22 and X-32 from two 22M bombers in the Kursk region of Russian Federation. At the same time, the invaders struck Kharkiv with S-300 surface-to-air guided missiles. In total, at least 14 S-300, S-400 and Iskander M ballistic missiles were launched from temporarily occupied Crimea, Kursk region, and, Bel- and Belgorod region of Russian Federation. At 6.30 in the morning, in Russia's Astrakhan region, five fighter jets MiG-31K were deployed, firing five KH-47M Kinjal ballistic missiles. Additionally, Russian Su-35 aircraft attacked with four KH-31 anti-radar missiles and one KH-59. Ukraine Air Force Commander Mykola Alishuk reported this information. All these strikes were reported in Odessa, Kharkiv region, Zaporizhia, western part of Ukraine, Lviv region, eastern part Dnipro, and the center part Kyiv and other civilian cities. Russian forces targeted residential buildings, shopping centers, maternity hospital, educational institutions, warehouses, etc. Russia used nearly every type of weapon in its arsenal, with homes and maternity hospitals hit, said Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. The Ukraine's Air Force said it had never seen so many missiles launched at once. Kyiv air defense have drastically improved in recent months, but on Friday they were extremely overwhelmed. An Air Force spokesman, spokesperson said that Russia used hypersonic cruise and ballistic missiles, including X-22 type, which are difficult to intercept. We've never seen so many targets hit simultaneously, he added. Black smoke bellowed from the different blast sites. We headed to one which was a 200-meter-long warehouse in Kyiv, Podilsky district, owned by a construction company. It had been completely hollowed out from the impact, 
it's a level of devastation only caused by a direct missile strike. For a month, mostly falling debris caused the damage and loss of the life that Ukrainians constantly fear. A bigger threat was now returned. A few kilometers away, a glass on one whole side of the skyscraper had been blown off from the force of another impact. Smoke had started to darken the sky. It was a drive through Kyiv which we hadn't made since the early days of the full-scale invasion. Nine people were killed in Kyiv. A metro station that was acting as an air raid shelter was also struck. Once again, it wasn't just Kyiv picking up the pieces either. Authorities claimed more than 10 Iranian-made Shahid drones and 15 missiles targeted the western city of Lviv, somewhere which has often been spared the worst of this invasion. The city of Konotop in Sumer region, close to the country's northern border, was also hit by a missile. Officials in Odessa say a high-rise building caught fire after being struck by a drone. Four people were killed and 22 people were injured, including two children of ages 6 and 8. The northeastern city of Kharkiv was under Russian missile strikes as well on Friday morning. The Kharkiv mayor said there were three people were killed and 13 were injured in a series of strikes. The governor of Dnipropetrovsk region said that six people were killed and 28 were injured in what he called tragic mourning for the region. Also, Sirhi Lisak said that a shopping center and a maternity hospital were targeted in the regional capital of Dnipro. In Zaporizhia city, eight people were killed after attack on infrastructure and thir- 13 people were injured. Its missile stockpiles are in what they were, but Moscow has shown it still wants to continue its tactic of suppressing Ukraine's population in the hope that not feeling safe will lessen their appetite for this war. With the exception of February 24 of 2022, this was the most massive attack on Ukraine. Then more than 160 missiles were fired and now more than 20. In such shelling, psychological goals are always on the third plan not even on the second. In fact, the situation here is very simple. It loomed even during the previous shelling when most of the Shahids fell on the area of anti-Ukraine defenses. And now, this is exactly the trend. Look at what the Speaker of the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation said in the press conference. They destroyed 100, 100, 500 RST, NASAMS, Patriot, radars, whatever. That is... There are tasks so far in this, and this goal is implemented step by step. And their first stage is the destruction of Ukrainian anti-aircraft defenses. I'm not sure how successful they are, but I'm sure that what is actually happening. If we hit 90% of the cruise missiles fired by Russians, what kind of destruction of air defense means they are actually talking about. They were not just effective, but super effective on those means of air attack that they are capable of firing. Ballistics is a completely different matter though. Currently, the Russians very attentively are tracking where our anti-missile systems are. We currently have two roving anti-missile complexes, one Patriot, one SAM. PT, which will soon be wandering around Ukraine for a year. And as you can see, Ukraine did did not manage to destroy a single ballistic weapon, because it's really hard to destroy ballistic missiles uh, due to their trajectory. So what is going to happen next? Look at the stockpile of missiles the Russians have accumulated. When they hardly fired any rockets at us for four months, 
they produce almost 120 rockets every month. That is, now they have accumulated up to 500 missiles just for the fall and the first month of the winter. That is, these launches will continue. And the emphasis, emphasis will be on the ballistics. Therefore, one should be beware of this and take the launch announce, announcement seriously. The only thing is that they are unlikely to hit the cities, no matter how much they produce. But, for example, stacks of rockets are exhausted. Actually, in the latest attack on December 29th, the debris of one of the rockets showed that this rocket was produced in the beginning of December of this of 2023. It means the Russians tried to pile up the missiles and they definitely shored on them. And when they accumulate enough of them, they launch a massive strike over Ukraine. It seems that the rate of production of aircraft in Russia is falling as well, and probably the rate of production of missiles is also in a low numbers, because both of them are equipped with a large number of radioelectronic components. And let's not forget, due to sanctions, Russians have difficulties purchasing those components. So Russia directed one and a half hundred various missiles and drones at Ukrainian cities this night. More than 100 of them were missiles and several dozen drones. Due to, due to such a large number of targets, the area defense system of Ukraine turned out to be overloaded at a certain moment, and some of the missiles, unfortunately, were, were able to penetrate these air defense systems and hit their targets. People were injured. Some people died, several civilian objects were destroyed, and unfortunately, residential buildings were hit. But the impact on the military facilities and critical infrastructure, as usual, was not as severe as those who launched these missiles and drones tonight. I would like to note that those who said that the Russian Federation has been stockpiling missiles and drones for some large, massive one-time strike are right. They have been accumulating for a long time and quite obviously hope for some stunning success. They wrote a lot about the fact that there would be a surprise for Ukrainians from which they would not be able to recover and so on. Yes, of course, there is a damage. Yes, there is a destruction. But there is no knockdown effect or even more so knockout for Ukraine. I believe that those who planned this massive attack set themselves the task of turning off the electricity throughout Ukraine, as it was the case in 2022 and this year as well. And further, if we think about it, we can assume that the goal of this attack were in addition to actually turning off the electricity in Ukraine. There is three of other reasons. So first, Russians started seriously imagining and believing they are actually started to win this war and they think that by striking at the civilian population it is possible to undermine the people's determination to resist bring these people to the streets to the streets and force them to demand from their government negotiations with russia and exactly on russian terms they're sure that to achieve this goal, it is only necessary to push a little, fall over, and Ukraine will crack and fall apart. And there will be a war of all against all in Ukraine. The people against the government, the government against the opposition, the opposition against the people, and against everyone else. The army will clash with the Ministry of Internal Affairs, the Ministry of Internal Affairs with SBU, and so on. They're sure that it will not be long until the moment when some very serious problems will begin inside Ukraine, precisely in the sense of legitimacy of the government. So the second motivation of Russians is to sow confusion, a pessimism in society. So, in this case, they just want to absolutely spoil the festive mood of Ukrainians, ideally to leave all Ukrainians without electricity for the new year as as many settlements as possible. 
This is absolutely normal from the point of view of Russians, a tactic against the civilian population. Conventionally speaking, to sneeze under the door. Again, they do not understand very well the situation that Ukrainians, again, can arrange a holiday, in this case, anywhere. Even in the trenches of the front lines, where there are absolutely no conditions for any celebration. In cities and villages, as a last resort. Generators actually were already purchased for such situation a long time ago, back in 2022. Plus, even now, as a result of this supermassive shelling, Russian missiles and drones have not been able to crush the power plants. So the third motivation for Russia's massive attack, of course, a revenge. Because as you remember, last week Ukraine armed forces destroyed four SU- SU-34 bombers as well as another jet, a rare flying command post Su-30 over the Black Sea. So basically Russian lost five jets within a week and it was a truly, truly big thing for Ukraine and it was a shame for Russia. Many Russians pilot and navigators were killed as a result of the Ukrainian attack. And let's not forget the large naval ship Novicherkask was blown up in Crimea just two weeks ago and was completely sank in the Black Sea. This is a strong demotivator for the Russian entire army. It was very clear from the reading Russian telegram channels and from the Russian TVs that they lost confidence in themselves, stopped feeling their superiority psychologically. I would even say turn into a victim. These night strikes on Ukraine, I assume in particular, were designed to overcome this mood. That is, the task of these strikes in particular was to encourage the Russian army and show that, in this case, the Russian Air Force is still strong and can show a lot of a lot to the enemy. But this motivation, in my opinion, is ideologically connected with the revenge. Well, I also have the assumption that the Russian generals, with the help of such a massive strike, tried to find out whether the F-16 fighter jets, which the Netherlands had promised to supply very recently, had entered the service of the Ukrainian army. Look at the logic here. If the F-16 were already in service with the armed forces of Ukraine, they would most likely take part in the destruction of cruise missiles launched by the Russians. And probably, in this case, these F-16 planes would have been recorded, tracked, somehow at least marked by the long-range Russian raiders. Because the rumors that F-16's aircraft already in service with the Ukrainians have been going on for a week. And besides, they were launched by one of the most respected Russian military bloggers and military telegram channels called Rybar. According to his channel, Russian sources reported that Ukraine received 15 F-16 fighters and 12 of them are already in Ukraine at bases in Ivano-Frankivsk and Ushgorod, which are at the western part of Ukraine. Also, the American magazine Newsweek cited its own anonymous source that F-16 might already arrived in Ukraine. It's difficult to say exactly. We don't have any information at the moment, but I can say this. The information cover of the arrival of these planes in Ukraine will definitely be tight and until the very end. Well, we will find out about it, I think, when photos or videos of these planes in the sky over Ukraine or those in the ground in, the ground in Ukraine fields. Well, due to the such intense on Ukrainian civilian cities, the West should realize that the war in Ukraine continues and continues brutally and terribly and that Ukraine is fighting against people with very approximate ideas about morality, ethics and other beliefs. So, we fighting against the real barbarians, monsters who shoot prisoners, engage in torture, kidnap children, and take them into the slavery. Because many in the West have begun to forget about the war. 
we understand everyone has his own business, own life and things to do. And so today the Russian Federation reminded about who is governs all the strikes, what is armed forces are ready to do and how they're waging the war against civilians. Because now Western TV channels, newspapers, and generally all mass media are simply overflowing with photos and videos of night shelling of Ukrainian cities. This is actually the topic of the day in the West. And do you know how this affected Western society? It seems to woke up. Wow, listen, the war isn't over yet, it turns out. And it turns out that the Russian Federation is before angrily continues to kill the civilian population of Ukraine. Recently, the West has been completely immersed in what is happening in Gaza Strip, and everyone somehow forgot about about Ukraine. And now the Russian Federation has returned Ukraine to the center of attention of Western public opinions, particularly Western politicians. Moreover, this happened This is the return of the war between Russia and Ukraine to the Western news agenda at the very moment when the fate of allocating multi-billion dollar military and financial aid to Ukraine is being decided in the West. Thank you for listening. If you like my podcast, please share with your friends.